the deepest and most painful loss you have ever experienced? A loss of a job, loss of a house, loss of health, or loss of a beloved one. Did you get over that loss? And are, are you still holding on to it? You see, loss is something that's in everybody's life. And what I'm going to do is talk about people who went through extraordinary losses and managed to turn them into inspiration. At first, this sounds like a paradox that's impossible. But if you successfully go through loss, you do, in fact, come out at the other side inspired. Now, I know these people personally, and I've invited all of them to IMD. Now, let me start with the first story. <clears throat> right here close to us. Some of you may recognize those twin daughters. Less than two kilometers from here, in January 2011, they were kidnapped by their father, taken out of the country, and are still missing. He later committed suicide by jumping in front of a train. So there's no way to know where they are. This is the mother, Irina, who was torn so deeply. And can you imagine what it's like to lose two children at the same time? You say goodbye in the morning, that night they're gone. And with the realization of not knowing where they are. Irina managed to go through the grief process. We all heard about the grief process. But how did she do that? How did she find the courage? And at the very beginning, she was in such denial. She was in, filled with so much rage, so much sorrow, that she could hardly express it. And fear and anxiety that something could happen that would un be unpredicted. You see, we all carry a certain illusion of control. But any of us can lose something like that. Then Irina had an idea. It came in a dream, actually, because she saw her daughters in the dark, and she said, I want to bring them into the light. I want them to be remembered. And so she started the long process of recovery. First of all, accepting the loss. Secondly, being able to understand what it means to rebond to life, a new attachment, and to go through the process of forgiveness and finally gratitude. Now what made it possible for her to find that courage? Because it really tests us, put us to the limit of what is possible. She wanted to honor her two daughters and Rather than just stay focused on her pain, she decided to do something to use the death of her daughters, or at least missing, because it's not sure what happened. She does, doesn't know. And how to turn that into something for a better good. And here is Irina creating the Missing Children of Switzerland Foundation. Let's help thousands and thousands of children around the world to help bring them into safety. You see, what was a terrible private tragedy turned into something that made the world a better place. And at the end, Irina had to stop asking the question, why? Why did this happen to me? And she had to move to another question that takes you out of victimization and deeper sorrow and suffering. And it was the question, what can I learn from this? Well, how can I use this situation to make the world a better place? And that's what she was able 
to do. And here she is in India, raising all kind of awareness about missing children. And she has brought joy to so many people, so many families. And in doing so, she gives meaning and purpose to her life, and she is also finding joy. Now, if you are a mother, you're a father, would you find the courage to do such a thing? And what happened is uh, something that her inspiration has changed all kinds of things. She is inspiring people, and they turn to her for that inspiration. Now, the story of Azim. Azim, living in San, Fran San Diego, in 1995, had his son, 20-year-old Tony, uh, um, Tony uh, Camisa, or I'm sorry, uh, Terry Camisa, who was murdered by a young boy who ordered a pizza, and when he refused to pay for the pizza, Tariq refused to give him the pizza. Pizza, 14 years old, he pulls out a gun, and with one bullet kills Tariq. What a devastating loss. His only son is brought to death over a pizza. Now, uh, Azim was a very devout Sufi Muslim. So he turned to the Quran and to a, a spiritual advisor. What do I do with this? And the advice he got was, do a good deed. And that he did do. Because what could easily turn into revenge and how the world is so filled with revenge today. He actually went to the prison and he met Tony along with the grandfather and forgave Tony for killing his son. What an act of courage to be able to find the willingness to forgive. You see, forgiveness can come from deep in the heart and he saw that there were actually victims at both end, ends of the gun, at both ends of the gun, at both ends of the gun. And so he has created the Terry Camisa Foundation, which talks about how there are options to violence. He travels all over the world, teaching there is an alternative to violence. And he's able to communicate to young people how they can find a way to stop creating violence, to come out in a different way. And he himself says, and I talked to him last week, um, he said, I am still fighting to get Tariq out of prison early. He has five more years to a 25-year sentence. And he has offered uh, his son Tony, or offered Tony, a job into the foundation and be able to help communicate his message. In fact, Tony has become an art writer and a poet, and from what I heard, quite a good one. And here, Azim is spreading that news again all over the world. Now, let's be clear, not all losses are death. So let's come to a closer one. Jamie was a mountain climber who loved mountaineering, and he one day, climbing with his best friend in the Alps near here, had a horrible tragedy. A storm moved in and lasted for five days. They couldn't get him off of the mountain. After five days, Jamie uh, came down with a helicopter. Frost bit, his legs were amputated from below the knees and below the elbows. But refusing to be a hostage, a psychological hostage, to the pain in his heart, to the loss. He decided to do something to recover the ability to live life with joy again. See, that's what happens with inspiration. You come back after a decision to live your life with joy. And he's now mountain climbing again. He's making plans later this year to climb the Matterhorn. I invite him to IMD, to our Executive Education HPL program. And he is actually juggling, juggling. 
And as he demonstrates this in front of the group, they always stand with a great deal of applause. He is an inspiration. Now, will you turn to a partner very near to you and look at them and say, front, back, you look like an inspiring person. Here's what Azim, thank you. Here's what Azim and Irina and um, Jamie have done. They had to change their mindset. They had to go through the grief cycle. They had to change their st state and see this not as something victimized and, and, and with deep resentment, but they had to change that state. They decided to make the world a better place. They're grateful for life and they find gratitude again. And this is all about leadership. How do you lead yourself and how do you lead others? And being able to understand that when you go through this, it's possible for certain things to happen. Here are the three R, and I think you can see the commonalities. And actually, what they say is sharing your grief will cut it in half. Sharing your joy will double it. From joy comes inspiration. Now, I'm not going to end this without also talking about my own story. This is my son, Douglas, who in 1992 was in an accident, living five days in a coma, and after that, he died. The deepest grief of my life. I could hardly stand up. Like Irina, she, f she fell on the ground often, saying it would be better if I were dead. I didn't go that far, but I certainly did not know where I would get the courage to go on. And what happened is that I decided I would not lose the joy of my life. I would not honor him by um, suffering and staying in pain, but to do something to honor his life. I also had two other children and I had to come back to the joy of life for them as well. They deserved a joyful father. And so I dedicated what I do now to in part honor Doug's life. And I'm inspired by him as I stand in front of you. I can think of him with inspiration, not grief. And my inspiration is in part being able to teach around the world leadership, personal development, and high performance, and mostly discovering the joy of life again if you lost it. Because no matter what happened, you do not have to lose the, 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 the joy of your life. And my message for you is very simple. You have to be able to turn whatever loss comes into inspiration. And that is an idea worth spreading. Thank you all very much. Thank you.